Hi guys, okay, welcome to my channel. All right, we are still on sensor segment. Okay, our previous studies we did we discuss about uh, sensor a lot, NPN sensor and PNP sensor, where we study how to configure sensor for contactor activation and relay activation. Okay, the reason for this particular segment is because when writing a program in an automation, you are going to use a lot of sensors. You're going to control process. You're going to control operation sequence using sensors. You know, some sensors are activation function. They just activate a process. Then some sensor, their job is to control a process throughout the operation. Once the operation sequence comes, sensor is going to be used throughout the operation. So you're going to use a lot of sensors, thousands of sensors, you know. What I mean is this, in some cases, for instance, you want to use sensor to activate a, a door opening and closing. So in that case, sensor is just initiate a command and also close the command and stop until sensor senses the presence of uh, um, uh, a human or a presence of object or a presence of anything is configured to sense. Then that is when the sensor gets activated and they initiate a command and also close that same command okay all right so if you understand the processes of sensor and how to integrate sensor to your process and for your operation sequence is very very the ability for you to do that is very very essential in automation space okay so that is why each time i come i segment these particular studies to go in a sequential manner so that we understand from the beginning and they know the end of where you are heading to is always the best. All right. OK, so this particular uh, exercise is also coming up based on request. Someone now asks for this. All right. So what we are going to do now. Is to activate this contactor using two sensor. One of the sensor is going to open the uh, and initiate the command for the contactor to open. Then another sensor, we close the sensor. Sorry, we shut down the contactor. I repeat again, contactor is going to be activated to close. That is to uh, send a command to equipment to start functioning, to start operation. Then another sensor again, we send the command to the equipment to shut down, to stop operation. Okay, let me give you another narrative. Um, like if you have a door, I think I have exercise regarding that. If you check my page, you see a page that a sensor is opening a door and closing a door. All right. Okay, so that is what I'm going to repeat. But this time, we're going to include a contactor using our um, lashing logic. Okay. You know, the essence of control and automation is because if you understand control, control how to uh, control logic, how to design logic and control logic. So that is all about control. Control is your ability to integrate a circuit and control that particular circuit. Then going into automation space to introduce that same logic is now making that particular operation more efficient more cost effective and more precision in operation you know so that is what automation will do with you when you are going to uh, go into automation so you must know control system you must also now go to automation to efficiently get your job done and in a precise manner all right so that is the essence of me allowing you to go to automation space coming from control perspective i always give this example please pay attention i give this example that if you are an engineer and they want to design a diagram okay first of all you know how to design with your hard copy with your hand know the parameters and the processes of designing first and know how to evaluate your design analysis and know how to also analyze your design when you are done with that, then you can now say, okay, let me use AutoCAD software to do the design. Okay? AutoCAD make it faster for you to deliver the job faster and more precise. 
Okay, so whatever symbol you want to create while designing your, uh, during your designing process, AutoCAD has the tools to make it faster for you. But AutoCAD will not do the design for you. You have to do the design, but AutoCAD will give you the uh, uh, tools and give you the interface for you to carry out that particular task. Okay, all right. So if you are, maybe for instance, you are aspiring to register for AutoCAD somewhere, you are going to be, you are going to go with this mindset that you need design structure first. You need a, you need design knowledge, and you also need design in you know, AutoCAD uh, user friendly. So you need AutoCAD to to perform that design. You also need the knowledge of design for AutoCAD to aid you. Okay, so that is it. So I'm trying to. Um, narrate to you what is obtainable in automation space because I have been there. I went through hell training people that does know that, that does not know um, um, control system. So when I teach them automation, at the time I, I have to pause and stop. I said, okay, let's leave automation for now. Let's deal with control system. Let's know how to design and how to. Uh, implement your design using control principles. So I will now take them to control uh, software. We now start design. After designing and you simulate, I said, okay, now let's build this sequence, this uh, logic and implement it in a practical base. And we do that. And discard it and they digest this very well. I said, okay, in that case, let's go to automation software. Let's now go and write program to control your logic, to control your your, your control panel will now synchronize our automation software with our control panel. So that is when PSC now take over the operation of your panel, of your control system, all right? So whenever I bring up update, make sure that you follow that principle that is laid down for you to follow, all right? Okay, so I did this before. I have similar design like this, but I don't know why, um, a friend of mine from Facebook requested for me to treat this. That is what I want to do now. Okay, uh, but uh, let me briefly summarize how uh, you are you are going to follow uh, um, social media. Okay, so when you go to social media, you discover that sometimes when you are trying to um, find out to to source for information, you know, millions of people are there trying to also source. Uh, related information that you are about to search for. So why searching for that? What I'm, uh, what I always advise is this: once you get to a particular uh, article or a particular uh, uh, information you are looking for, always screenshot it with your hand. If you are browsing with your phone, always screenshot that page before you continue looking for that information. That is when you get to where the particular page you are looking for. So why watching the video? Screenshot it. Then continue because sometimes a call might come in to in, in interrupt that information. So you can't find it again. So if you go back to social media to search for that same page, you will go out. The reason is because so many people are sourcing for that information. So it will, it will leave you and go back to another person. So you might not find it again. So whenever I capture a page and you are watching the video, screenshot it or just copy the link and save it so that. If something interrupt that view, you can always go and search for that particular video and get that same video, not getting a related video, because that is what is happening. If a particular information slip out of your uh, view, a related one may come close to that, but not exactly what you are watching the previous times. Okay, all right. Now um, let's commence. Now let's start. So what we're going to do is. Let's put up what we call a lashing circuit to lash this contactor. Then after then, we now incorporate our um, sensor device to do that, okay? All right, so I, let's get a switch. Get to switch here. This is to control the, we say start, or let's say stop. This is our stop button. Change the color. Okay, this is our start button. We want to 
design a lashing circuit for this contactor first. Okay. All right. Um, let's create MCB first. I feed this. Then I have my output. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Uh, I think the best way for doing this is to create a schematic. Let me make it a. Uh, let's create a schematic. I think that is best. That should be the best. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's just do a mini schematic. Okay. I want you to. Just hold on. Let's create a schematic. It's always the best for you to understand the operation sequence before you do your wiring. Okay. So this is what we need. We want to we want to control a lash. We want to create a lashing circuit by using sensor and. Uh, This is K1. This is the coil. This is our start. Let's say S1. Make it faster. This is S2. Okay, this is my supply. Let me just take the supply from here. Okay, this is my lashing circuit. This is a contactor, auxiliary contact for this. Start push button, stop push button for me to lash this. Okay, so this is what I have. So I want to do the wiring process using this same concept. Okay, all right, so let's change this to. One and two. And this should be three and four. When you get this component, that is the number you are going to find on the component, the actual number. Okay, that's why I want to represent them by their numbers. All right. Okay, this is one and two. I don't need two number. Let me say I have five. I have six. Let my MCB number be at this. I want to. I want a, a uniform numbering tag. Eh? All right. So if I have that, then this is one and two, and this one and two. This is three and four, and this is three and four. Then this is A one, A two. This is A one, A two. Then this is thirteen and fourteen. My NO for my lashing device. And this is 13 and 14. So let me let me just walk you through, okay? Just pay attention. Stop button, stop button, start button, start button. This is the schematic, and this is the wiring, uh, the actual representation of the component. Then this is contactor coil. Contactor coil is here embedded, A1, A2. Then auxiliary contact 13, 14 is this, is fine there, 13, 14, normally open. Okay. Now this is contactor and this is my contactor. Start button, start button, stop button, stop button. Auxiliary contact is embedded here already. This is my MCB to control my circuit. So now I want to do this wiring according to what I have here. All right, I have here starting from my supply to one. And I have here two to one, terminal one of my stop button. Then two should go to three to feed this one. Then this is the two should come to three. Then four should go to A1. This is my four. I'm taking it to A1. Then A2 should go to neutral. A2 here should go to neutral. So I'm going to wire according to what I have here. Okay, just pay attention. Let's go. This is four. 
Pamenatria. Let's come into my A1. Look at this. 4 to A1. Alright, I'm done with that. So I want to incorporate my lashing. Lashing said take from 3 to 13, then take from 4 to 14. So where is my tray? Look at my tray here. I'm taking it to 13. So come here, take from that tray. Take it to 13. Then where is my 4? This is 4. Take it to 14. This is 4. Take it to 14. So I have it here. But now, watch. I have it close to this is 4 and I have it here. So I can easily take from here to 14 too. So I can take from here to 14. So let me do that. Take that one. The shortcut. Take from here and give to 14. Always develop the habit of taking from here to 14. The reason is because during your termination of this, this one is far from where this one is. This one is by the door and this one right inside the enclosure. So you can come back to the door to take this four to go to your lashing device. But you have it within the contact or so easily take from here and give 14 because this one is coming from four. All right. OK. OK, so if we are done with that, then you feed your neutral. All right. Now, take note, just listen carefully. The reason for giving you this wiring diagram and also giving you this schematic is because I want you to understand the operational sequence of what you want to incorporate this uh, device into. Because if I just design this and quickly put this um, sensor, some of us might not understand the operational sequence of this first. So the, it's always a good practice. Whenever I want to incorporate a device to existing structure, understand the operation sequence of that particular design first. That is the essence of me putting on this. Otherwise, I have this, a lot of them, on my page. So if you go to the page, you'll find this. You'll find the 3D diagram wiring. you also find the schematic. I have them more than enough. But if I just put them up and start incorporating the, um, the subject issue, because our subject issue for this class is for you to understand sensor operation and how to use sensor to control this. But if I do that now, you might not understand this. So let me, I said, okay, that is why I'm saying, okay, I'm saying, let me recap by putting up the function first and putting up the logic and you understand the logic before we now incorporate the sensor device. Okay. All right. So let's proceed. So take this up a little for space. Okay, we are done with this. So what I'm going to do now is um, let's simulate first and see if it works. Let's use this one to simulate first. Um, okay, this one has closed. I shut down from here. I put down from here. I shut down from here. All right, now let's simulate this schematic. It's on now. This one is closed. I want to shut down. I shut down from here. So you now understand the lashing logic. Okay, this is a lashing logic to control contactor. So what we are going to do now is to incorporate our sensor. Now, in some system, you will have this. You will have this setup already. And it's going to be enclosed in a control system. You have a panel. You now said, okay, you now incorporate this to the panel. The essence is this. If this one fails, you can now manually operate that same system. All right? And there is always a stipulated law that every automated system must have an override, must have a manual override system. Okay? For instance, you have ATS, automatic transfer switch, that stacks your DZ generator when the utility supplies are, is, not, is inactive. If you have such such function, you should also create override on that same ATS so that when the contactor fails to close, 
there is an issue and the contractor fails, you have override a means of sending power to the output uh, side of the load. Okay, all right. Now, what I'm going to do now is to integrate this. Okay, just hold on. All right, now, um, due to tight uh, space factor, let's take away this. Or let's rather shift it and keep it somewhere here. Um, let's keep it here. Let's just keep it here. Okay. Then let's start uh, our sensor incorporation. Now we need a power pack because sensor requires a DC. And here we've been working with the AC. So in that case, I'm going to work with DC and AC. So let's look for our power pack. We need a power pack. Let me see if I have power pack here. That is power supply. Uh, let me see if this will work. Let's see if this will work. Okay. Okay, we need power supply. We need AC. So input here, then we now get output. So we need 12 volts out. First of all, which type of sensor do we need? Your job will determine which type of sensor you need. So in this case, I need um, MPN. Let's say we need MPN or PNP. Let's use PNP. Okay. Let's use this type. Um, change this to PNP as well. Okay. You remember in our previous exercise, I said that when you want to use a sensor, find out the voltage, find out the strength of the transmission, transmission strength, that the rate of power uh, transmission, that the rate of output you are getting from it. Yeah, the current that will pass through the signal that you are getting the output okay like some of them will be in milliampere so because of that we are going to interface our sensor with a relay because we cannot ascertain the strength of that sensor at the current rating so in that case um let's invite the services of a relay device okay let's interface it with a relay so i'm going to have a relay here to relay Okay, arrow one, arrow two. 